Welcome to the Do Not Next Show. I'm your host. My name is Margaret Nixana. We are broadcasting live here out of the Inubella Cultural Resource Center located in Inubik. Um, on today's episode, we have a part two to last week's episode. We have Bambi Amos joining us again for our second, our part two to part mm -hmm. episode of the show. How are you? I'm nervous again. <laughs> All over again. <laughs> yeah. So, last week, um, we did an episode with your sister Miranda. Mm -hmm. She is back in Whitehorse, yep. so she won't be joining us on this episode. Um, but last week, we had we talked about um, your interest in making mitts, mm -hmm. and we did the cutout of mitts. Um, and then this week we were going to start sewing. Yes. But before, since it's been a whole week and we might have new viewers, mm -hmm. can you just reintroduce yourself again? Do you mind? <laughs> uh, sure. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so, just like how I did last week. Yeah, just where you're from <clears throat> and who your parents are. And... Uh, yeah, uh, my name is Bambi Amos and I'm from here in Inuvik and I grew up in... Uh, Saks Harbor Tuck and here. Mm -hmm. um, my parents are Beverly and Lawrence Amos. Mm -hmm. uh, my dad actually changed his name to his Inuvialuk name, mm -hmm. Koganak. Mm -hmm. um, and his parents are Michael and Bessie Amos. Um, and his, my mom's parents are uh, David and Agnes Nasagawak. Yeah. And we, we talked about last time, you have like a huge family mm -hmm. related to everybody. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Almost everybody. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, last week we did cutouts. I'll just start with that. Mm -hmm. um, I didn't do mine, but I figured I'd do mine on the show. Mm -hmm. um, I see that you've done yours. Well, I did the seal... Um, part of it yeah and I cut out um, the lining for us yeah um, and then hopefully today we'll get to completing at least one side of the lining mm -hmm. and then sewing on the trimming okay the beaver so that's trimming. that's the plan for today for the sewing part and I walked in 
to this beautiful setup. Mm -hmm. And you brought some stuff with you, and I was wondering if you can show it before we get started. Yeah, sure. I'll start with my purse here. This mm -hmm. is my purse I made um, probably like 12 years ago. Um, I hardly wore it because I just like love it so much mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh at the sewing class in Saks Harbor when we were uh, given the pattern and taught how to make them um, everyone was making shell bags like mm -hmm. for hunting mm -hmm. and I was like I'm not making a shell bag I'm making myself a purse so that's yeah. what I did <laughs> yeah <laughs> and you've hardly worn it yeah I hardly yeah. wore it I wear it mm -hmm. now though yeah mm -hmm. okay and the next thing that you have? Uh, my earrings. Um, I have these earrings that I'm wearing right now. I talked about it in the last episode um, yeah. that I just finished this collection. Mm -hmm. This is my very first earring collection. Mm -hmm. um, um, I sold one pair so far. Um, I'm wearing one pair as well. Mm -hmm. um, and yeah. Yeah, so this I'm is... so excited about them. <laughs> They're like it. My theme is um, Arctic tundra flowers. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And there, it really does like. Okay, so you, where can people buy them? Uh, well, I, I first, I guess, I direct you to my NWT Arts profile. Yeah. There, you can find links to. Uh, like my social media and mm -hmm. proudlyindigenouscrafts.com, uh, which I'm a vendor on. Mm -hmm. um, so you can see uh, all my links there. Mm -hmm. um, and then these earrings are for sale on proudlyindigenouscrafts.com. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. It's really exciting. It is. When I saw, like, mm -hmm. you kind of talked about it a little bit on the last one, mm -hmm. and then I saw that you posted that you had a whole collection. Yep. I was like, oh my goodness, they're so beautiful. Mm -hmm. And they really do, like, the colors are so similar to the flowers of the pictures you posted. Yeah. Too. If you check out my Instagram and my Facebook page, mm -hmm. uh, Bambi's Traditional Arts, mm -hmm. you'll see my posts and um, of the pictures of the earrings and also pictures of the flowers for my inspiration yeah and my theme they're yeah. very very pretty mm -hmm. and then which next is um name? and then my uh gaupuk. i did the embroidery on those shoes mm -hmm. and i've done embroidery in the past but i haven't mm -hmm. actually put the whole shoe together <laughs> so that's my plan in the future yeah. is mm -hmm. to be able to put the whole shoe together yeah so i did that embroidery yeah. I'm really proud of that. Who put the shoe together? Um, Annie Inuktilik from Uluhaktuk. Oh. She lived in Saks Harbor for a while, so oh. that's, yeah, that's okay. when I finished them. Yeah. That was about, um, probably 15 years ago. That's a long time. Yeah. They're still so pretty. Mm -hmm. They still look new. And these are yours? You kept them? Yeah, they're mine. For yourself? Yes. Yeah. Was that everything that you wanted to show? Yeah, that's all. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I wasn't sure. Okay. Um, do you want to get started first? Um, these, these right now? Sure. The tacking? Okay. Yes. Okay. So for this portion of the show, last week we showed how to do the cutting. You did the cutting. You showed how to lay it out on the seal skin and figure out how what coloring you like to use and stuff and mm -hmm. so we did the cutting last time and this week we're gonna show the tacking and how to do the tacking yeah yeah so we can start on mine do we have a pen i might have a pen in my bag okay oh yes i do okay So, you have the thread. Yes, I do. Yep. The sinew? Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm always like, when you buy new sinew, that's way too long. You have to find out how many times it splits. Mm hmm. Is that long enough, do you think? Uh, I go a little bit shorter. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, about there. Do they make like bigger holes or something when it's too long? 
Um, when it's too long, I guess. Maybe it would just... I can't remember who told me that. It might have been just lying to me. <laughs> I don't remember. <laughs> I really don't remember who told me that. But they told me not to use, like, long well, sinew. the reason why I wouldn't use long sinew is uh, it would tangle. Oh, yeah. That makes yeah. more sense. <laughs> <laughs> the tangle easier. Mm-hmm. So how was your week? Um, did it you was it was good. Did you go back out on the land? Yeah, we went out. I brought my boy out hunting. So yeah, I have my FAC. <laughs> yeah, I brought That's him out. That's like a lot of work to get one. Yeah. So um, do you have your hide? I do. I just have to find it. Okay. So that's what we need first. Okay. Yep. I don't even remember if I cut it out, you know. Just a sec. Um, if you don't have it cut out, the leather is here. Oh, I don't remember. It was only a week ago. <laughs> like that. If not, we can tack on the lining. Yeah, no, I don't have it cut out. Is it still in that? No. I, I know I drew it out. Did you draw it? I did draw it You can it check out. Okay. on that hide there. Yeah. But in the meantime, I could um, show you how to tack on the lining. So, I, like when I, like my thought, like to teach is mm -hmm. to tack first. Yeah. Like sometimes I don't need to tack. Oh, I see them. Oh, okay. Do we have scissors? You can use these. Okay. So, um, so that's the way I teach is to tack first. Mm -hmm. So here at the thumb at the points. <clears throat> it's just like sewing class, just quiet <laughs> when you focus. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to talk all the time when you're sewing. <laughs> Silence is okay. Mm -hmm. And then I tack here. I'm still on the thumbs. Mm -hmm. I tack here on the other side. And uh, <clears throat> I'd actually sew this whole thumb the from thumb, that. The thumb first? Yep. Just like I did on this side. Mm -hmm. If you want to see. <laughs> Um, I'll do this knot. If you want to have a look at the mitt that I finished too, the yeah. mitts. How did the leather, leather go? Uh, it is kind of thin. Yeah, I can feel it. And the <gasps> A little bit. Oh no. So I would recommend using a thicker leather. Yeah. Um, we were so limited at the time mm -hmm. on what we could get for like today, that yeah. day. Yeah, I definitely recommend a thicker. Um, Do you hear that? Yeah. There's Sorry. A, there's a bird. Is a bird? Yeah. yeah. It's just flying from window to window. It's the robins. Oh, yeah. how nice. It sounds nice. Yeah, they're just chirping away okay one side but yeah I'm gonna keep these mitts for myself and I'll yeah I'll uh, <laughs> test out the leather yeah I might have to how durable it. it is I 
Um, if you know how to use a sewing machine, you could definitely sew the lining with the sewing machine. Mm hmm Do you do that sometimes? Uh, I haven't, but I want to start. It'll probably make time go by, like, faster. Yeah, for sure. Get them done quicker. For at least when you do, like, Sherpa. Not if you're using, like, Sher Beaver. Oh, no. You'd need a fur machine for that. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> On the um, first episode, we just like kind of got to know who you and your sister were. Mm -hmm. And then we went straight into teaching. Yeah. <laughs> to do the cutting and everything. Mm -hmm. um, so I wanted to ask you a few questions if you don't mind. Yeah, I don't mind. Yeah. So I was going to ask where, what, what was the first time? What was the first thing, like the first item you've ever sewn and who taught you? Um, the first thing I remember sewing, I think I was in like grade three or four or something. It was, um, it was a Christmas gift for my mom mm -hmm. and it was a wall hanging out of felt mm -hmm. and then you just embroider uh, a different color felt on felt mm -hmm. and it said I love you oh that was the first thing and I still have it <laughs> oh. my mom gave it to me she's like Bambi this is your first sewing nice. <laughs> yeah <laughs> so um yeah I did that uh, as a child and then mm -hmm. when I got uh, when I did the sewing class no 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 it was before the sewing class mm -hmm. um I did that embroidery Oh, yeah. yeah. That's really good for yeah. your first time doing, mm -hmm. like, really, that's a big project for embroidery work. Yeah. So it was, I started that, um, that embroidery mm -hmm. um, before I learned how to sew with fur. Mm -hmm. And my cousin Kim Lucas taught me. Oh, how nice. Yeah. The first thing I ever sewed was a name tag. In, a name tag? Yeah, in uh, Lucy's home ec class. Mm -hmm. Lucy Cockney. Oh, okay. And she always teased me because I beaded my name Margaret, but mm -hmm. that's seven letters. I think I was in grade five or six. And everyone else had shorter names, like four or five mm -hmm, letters. Mm -hmm. And I got so annoyed. I, you know those, um, what are they called? Those bees that are really long. Yep. Bango? Bang bung bungle? Bango? Bugle? Bugle, yeah, yeah. Bugle beads. I use that for the E and the T. She's like, you just did a shortcut. <laughs> you just cheated. That's a smart way. <laughs> yeah. I was so done. Because yeah. everyone else was finished. I remember and I was the last person and I had two more letters to do and I just I completed it with a couple B's. <laughs> There's actually um, on display here in the Cultural Resource Center. Mm -hmm. It's over there by the door. But um, I did embroidery. Um, and then they got uh, Lucy Cockney, the lady that you just mentioned. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. She put my, my shoe, those shoes together. Wow. Yeah. Oh, That's and cool. I didn't even know that that was happening. And when I found out, like, the staff here at the cultural center told me and I was like, Oh my God, I got to see them. <laughs> did you go in and take a look? Yep. Yeah, I did. It's a really, really nice, like the people who put it together did such a good job mm -hmm. at all the displays. Yeah. So yeah, I've done, um, embroidery work. So I, that's one of, one of my aspirations is to do the whole shoe. <laughs> <laughs> that That's a really good lead for my next question, which is what is your inspiration or what makes you want to sew? Um, my inspiration? Um, 
I'm actually going to be in the next to Saixat magazine. And mm-hmm. that was one of the questions that um, I had was, mm-hmm. uh, no, one of the articles is the art of keeping warm. Mm-hmm. And that's uh, definitely my inspiration. Is, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Keeping, warm keeping warm in the north. Yeah. Or anywhere in Canada or wherever. I think we're gonna be on the same, in the same one. Mm-hmm. I saw your um, picture in it too. Yeah. How? Okay. Am I doing this wrong? I think I'm doing this wrong. Do I need to cut more off? Did you cut on the line? It's like slightly off. Oh, I think that's fine. Yeah. Yep. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, so yeah, keeping warm is definitely uh, my inspiration and like our ancestors and like how they did it, mm-hmm. you know? <laughs> I was sitting down. Can Who? just dream about that. <laughs> Who was I sitting with? I can't remember who I was sitting with. One of my cousins, I think. And I was beading and my bead, my needle broke, like it snapped. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I just think our ancestors used to do this with bone. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Like through hide, not just like a bead. Okay. So to tack it, do you want to show how to do that? Yep. Those birds are just having fun. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so you need your, t- you can just set them down. Yeah. And, and then left and left and right and right. Yep. Maybe. Okay. Just the thumb parts for now. So here, can you pass that other? Mm-hmm. So the way I start it, oh sorry, is with the thumbs, mm-hmm. and then so you'll want the outside on the inside. Yeah. So you want that there. And you want that there, and to tack, you'll meet these two points, mm-hmm. and you'll do a stitch there. Okay. And then you'll do another stitch here. And then for beginners, I do a stitch at the top of the thumb as well. Mm-hmm. I will do a stitch at the top of the thumb. Yep. And you could sew any way you want, feel comfortable. <laughs> <laughs> we were talking about it in the last episode, how so I sew towards myself. Mm-hmm. And some people sew outwards. Everything is so busy now. I need a thimble because I'm not going through that. I have not made mitts, like I said, in probably 10 years. So I guess uh, one thing that you could do is like once you do a stitch or two, just make sure your material is still lining up properly. Mm-hmm. I just caught myself doing that and thought I'd say it. <laughs> oh, didn't even know how to. <laughs> I still do that. <laughs> well, you know why? Because I beat earrings all day long and I don't put a knot in them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you just uh, use a lighter and burn the. Yeah. Oh, okay. Mm-hmm. You burn the end of the thread? Yep. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that would be another good tip is to just, <laughs> as soon as you cut your thread at the end, mm-hmm. make a knot. 
because sometimes I get excited and start sewing and then go through <laughs> like that. Yeah. No knot at the end of the thread. This is so nice to work with seal again. So I think we could pull, I'm almost done this. We could pull out that beaver. Mm -hmm. Do you have the beaver? Yep. I'll just make this into a knot or a stitch. It must be really warm. I think, um, like with this type of fur, like the beaver, mm -hmm. it's really thick. Like mm -hmm. the skin is very thick. And mm -hmm. what some people do is they wet it and then they um, stretch it. Even more? Even more. Yeah. That way they can use more of the fur. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Since we're not doing that, then mm -hmm. it's fine. Or we could just try and stretch with our hands. That's what Miranda was doing this mm -hmm. last time to the seal. Yep. Um. Yeah. I I have a pattern for my trimming, mm -hmm. mitts trim, and I forgot it. Oh, no. So if you don't have mitt trimming, you could just use the mitts yeah. or the mitt um, pattern, mm -hmm. the trimming pattern. Yeah. <laughs> if you don't have the trimming pattern, yeah. then you can use the top of the mitt. Can you pass the pen, please? Oh, um, and you can choose like where you want, what part of the beaver you want to use for your trimming. Mm -hmm. So do you want to pick? Um, do you want to go this way or this way? Yep, we'll be going sideways. The okay. fur will be going sideways on okay. the mitt. Okay. Yep. Um, it's up to you. I'm not fussy about the trim. Okay, mm -hmm. and also you could pick how thick you want it too, like how far mm -hmm. you want it down on the mitt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like it thicker. Thicker? Like like where you had it just before. Yeah, I like it. Like, like that? It. Yeah. Okay. Um, okay, I'll just go right down the center. Just move this stuff out of the way. And I'm using this. It's about poking so. What I've done in the past was like to use a measuring tape and just measure my mitt. Mm hmm. Um, I don't have any measuring tape. Yeah. So we'll use what we can, and I think I'll use this box. Mm. Just to draw a straight line. Mm hmm.
So that's gonna be the center and the length. Um, how thick you said you wanted? That looks good. About there? Yep. Okay, it's all tapped together. Has your son called to say they got a new piece yet? Yeah, they got they got some today. Nice. They're finally starting to fly. Mm-hmm. So does it matter? Can I sew like this way to this way, then this way? Or do you I usually, usually go this way? Yeah, I usually sew up. Okay. Or yeah, up to the tip of the thumb. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so these two are gonna be yours. Okay. How's it going? Good. Just, sorry, really concentrating now. <laughs> <laughs> like, really concentrating. What's one thing you think you would want to, like, learn how to sew? Um, I think it's, like, the Gawax, completing the Gawax. Yeah? Yeah. Gawax. A lot of people call them Gawax. I call them Gawax. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, because they're so nice. They're, you mm -hmm. know, they're our, they, were, they are our fancy shoes, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. I think they look so beautiful, like, you know, when you're all dressed up. Yep. And you, instead of wearing high heels, you wear Gawax. Mm -hmm. They're seriously, it just completes a look. Yep. Okay, I have four here. I have to count that. And then, do My you want to cut them out or should I cut them out? Oh, you can cut them out. Okay. I really, really like sewing right now. I'm very focused. Mm -hmm. Forgetting to host a show. <laughs> <laughs> it's okay. We were out camping over the long weekend. It was very cold, but it was so nice at the same time. Like, um, it was nice to be out. Mm -hmm. It was cold, but it was really nice to be out. Mm -hmm. They, all the little kids, every time they saw geese, they were like yelling at their dads Jeez. to get, get their guns. And all the dads are like, sometimes they were ready. Sometimes they were like cleaning geese or Sometimes they were in the tent, mm -hmm. and it didn't matter what they were doing. The kids were like, geese, geese, there's geese mm -hmm. over us. You could have got that. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. It's exciting. Yeah, it is. The kids were really excited, all the little kids that were there. Or I drew this side a little bit narrower. I can see from my drawing, so I'm just gonna cut it wider. Oh, okay. Oh, 
honestly, concentration. Um, so, is this your first time teaching how to do sewing? Like, I can't remember if you said you've done it before. Um, well, I've taught my daughter. Yeah. Um, and I've taught some friends. Mm -hmm. But, um, um, oh, and actually I taught, um, I think it was the second year that I joined the Great Northern Arts Festival. Mm hmm did you do a sewing class there? Yeah, I did a sewing class, um, a kid sewing class, mm -hmm. youth, mm -hmm. youth sewing class. Um, they did embroidery wall hangings. Wow. And I would like to teach. I was just going to ask you that. Mm -hmm. Do you think that, um, is that something you hope for the future? Uh, yeah, definitely. We'll see how that goes. I'm gonna have to take a lot of patience because you're teaching me and I'm really slow. <laughs> <laughs> when you were growing up and learning, did like you ever have to take apart your sewing and redo stuff? Because I know that Nunky, like he was on our very, very first episode mm -hmm. and he said like, you don't do something right you gotta take it apart and do it again <laughs> <laughs> uh me personally um i think i had to take things apart yeah 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 i don't really remember but yeah yeah the only thing i make is like right now earrings mm -hmm. and i have a <laughs> i have a bowl full of earrings that like i miss i messed up on this the beads or yeah I, and i sometimes i'm sewing so fast to try to complete orders mm -hmm. i just throw the whole earring into the bowl and say i'll keep it for the beads <laughs> and i start over oh, okay. but i make little tiny earrings so it's easy to to do that mm -hmm. i couldn't imagine having to redo like a something really big It's all part of learning though. Yeah. <laughs> Beaver fur is not so bad, but I mostly make trimming out of fox mm -hmm. and the hair flies all over. So I usually could use a comb <laughs> or um, use my hand to clean off all the fur that got cut off. Mm -hmm. Do you think you would ever try to learn how to make, you know, those, um, what are they called? Those, the Ugiuk. Ugiuk bottom? Yeah. Do you think you'd ever learn how to do that? I wouldn't mind to learn how. Yeah. Because those yeah. are waterproof mufflets. Yeah. And they're so pretty too. They are really pretty. Your mom has a pair. Does I she have a pair? I think so, yeah. Or am I thinking of her um I might be thinking of her caribou skin. Those look really pretty. Mm -hmm. You could turn those into earrings. <laughs> <laughs> That'll be your next project. <laughs> I'm still a beginner. <laughs> I'm not ready to move into fur. Not quite yet. <laughs> so if you want to, you can still stretch this too. Mm -hmm. Get a little bit more. Yep. Or if you want your trimming to be a little bit long or wider, you could stretch this. Mm -hmm. Did um, it take you long to sew those ones? This? Yeah. I did it yesterday. Okay. Just fast. <laughs> <laughs> 
I forgot mine here when I left out in Milan. Mm hmm. Because we left Friday, Thursday, Friday. Friday, Thursday afternoon, I think. And I had like intentions to do them. Mm -hmm. But I knew I wouldn't because I brought my beading and I couldn't even do that. I was so busy watching children mm -hmm. that that's all I did. Especially outdoors. It was. It, like, um, it was the first time some of them have been that far. Like we went towards the mouth of the river. Mm -hmm. So I have a little trick when I do the trimming. Um, okay, front and back. sure my thread is knotted yeah this is thick <laughs> do you use do you ever make your own thimbles out of hide uh, I have, but I have this thimble that I love so much. Mm -hmm. I wonder if they ever get worn out. Um, mine is pretty thick metal. Yeah. What about you? Would you prefer a hide thimble or I, a metal? I used to, like what I used to make mitts a long time ago. I had a I had a thimble that was really nice. I probably still have it somewhere. Mm -hmm. um, but I remember making them out of hide and thinking, oh, it's so flexible. <laughs> but it's been a very long time since I've done this. When you're going to school and then have young kids, it can be quite costly. Yeah, financially and time-wise. Mm -hmm. I never realized how much time goes into all of this to create like winter wear or anything like that would go under high fashion, like earrings or jewelry or anything. Yeah. It's very well, time I took a break. Uh, when I was a student. Yeah. <clears throat> I did some sewing, like to make some extra money, but mm -hmm. for the most part, I, yeah. Mm -hmm. Just concentrate on, concentrated on my kids and study. Yeah. I did it. This first section. No. <laughs> <laughs> How did you feel? sewing towards mm -hmm. yourself that's how I always sew oh towards myself yeah I only did it one time facing away to oh my okay. natic Mabel yeah and she stopped me and she was like boobies turn your needle around okay so she fixed you right away well I, <laughs> I when she said that I looked at her and I was like well I have to turn the sewing around too because mm -hmm. it was facing her mm -hmm. yeah What's the time? Um, we got like <clears throat> 15 minutes. Okay. So I, I don't know if I'll finish this in 15 minutes, but <laughs> at least I'll get some done and you'll be able to see it. Mm -hmm. This show is like probably the most quiet one I've ever had. <laughs> probably because I'm really concentrating. <laughs> <laughs> so this is why I wrote B and F back and front. The front is 
this side back is this side mm -hmm. so that helps me to remember which way to tack yeah, it on yeah which way to tack it on mm -hmm. um, and I always the on the trimming the side that I sew here goes uh, with this side of the mitt yeah like not on the front you mm -hmm. know the side of the mitt that's showing here mm -hmm. but the back side yeah is this just stuff you learned over time yeah i just learned it over time and my mom my mom taught taught Ooh. me too Yeah, um, also, uh, the other instructor, I wanted to mention the other instructors, um, from the sewing class mm -hmm. in Saks Harbor. There was Brenda Dillon, I mentioned her, Brenda mm -hmm. Lucas. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and Lena Wilkie was instructing. She taught me a lot. She gave me patterns too. Yeah, she's really talented mm -hmm. too. Mm-hmm. Her and I joined, uh, the first time that I joined the Black Mountain Arts Festival, mm -hmm. uh, her and I went. Mm -hmm. That's when I was living in Saks Harbor. Yep. So that was a fun thing to do. Um, Are you going to be doing the Great Northern Arts Festival this year? No, no, not this year. I think I was attended it like two or three times. Mm-hmm. And it's so exciting and <laughs> like you don't know like what to expect and stuff and mm -hmm. I kind of do now so I like to go and shop instead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot of work too. To... Yeah, it's a lot of work to prepare for shows like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, just like the, the Winnipeg show that I attended. Yeah. The Winnipeg Art Gallery crafted. Mm-hmm. What was that like? <clears throat> um, it was fun. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It was really fun. A lot of people went from around here, hey? Uh, from the Northwest Territories, there was, I think, eight of us. Yeah. Yeah. Did you do sewing? Just so, just mitts for that. Um, I did mostly mitts. Yeah. I did uh, women's mitts and I did kids mitts, and I also did um, Oakpick. I did. I brought two of those. Mhm. Mm yeah. Did people like them? Yeah. Yeah. I got orders for them. Oh, nice. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I brought about twelve items. Oh and that was just the right amount. Yeah. I was like, oh my god, I don't think I have enough to like bring. Like, yeah. I just didn't seem like enough. Mm -hmm. But it was. It was. I sold out like right on the last day. Oh, that's good. Yeah. It was also tiresome preparing and mm -hmm. traveling two days. Yeah. You know, down south from the north. <laughs> But I'm definitely not complaining. The The opportunity was just amazing. Is it similar to the Great Northern Arts Festival? Like, is it, is it a big event like that? Um, it's a, sh it, well, it's a show and sale. Um, oh, okay. So it was mostly a sale because it was just after the openings from COVID. Mm -hmm. So there wasn't much show oh, okay. part of it mm -hmm. yeah you think you'd ever go again and this time bring earrings oh yeah yeah for sure i'd go <laughs> yeah yeah the Wig winnipeg art gallery is beautiful what did i do here oh i'm sewing the wrong way Does um, Lacey ever get like super interested or want to try to do this kind of stuff? 
Um, she, what? She's she's just starting to grow up, so. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, <clears throat> I was trying to like put myself in her shoes mm -hmm. and like see like like give her options and see what her mm -hmm. interests are with yeah. sewing. Mm -hmm. So now she's starting off with um, like helping me mm -hmm. with the lining. Mm -hmm. But um, last year she was really big into beading earrings. Yeah. Yeah, so she did that. Did she do the earrings that you do or did she do like brick stitch or? Uh, she mostly used the bugle. Oh, Earring, okay. Yeah. Uh, beads. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah. I'm seriously loving this. I'm like just. I'm a very talkative person, mm -hmm. and I just wanna <laughs> concentrate. <laughs> I need to start again. For family first I don't think I'll ever like I shouldn't say I don't think I'll ever but I definitely need to start sewing for family mm -hmm. and start that way yeah I'm gonna take a break How's it going? Good. Almost done? Um, just on one oh, okay. side mm -hmm. of the trimming. That was addictive. <laughs> I spent like 45 minutes just with my head down and reminding myself that I need to ask questions. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so sorry about that. <laughs> but it's been so long. Um, well, it is enjoyable. That's why I do it. Yeah. Just play the radio and drink tea and then sew. I seriously could just do that and that alone. I do that with beading. Mm -hmm. <laughs> just sit there and my kids are like, Mom, look at this. Mom, look at that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's going this away. This is my time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um... Do you have any advice that you think that you'd like to give to the young in Uvaluit, like the youth, in Uvaluit youth? Um, I definitely say like to follow your dreams. Mm -hmm. Like that's what I, um, uh, like, like I mentioned with Lacey, my daughter, like I just tried mm -hmm. to uh, give her, like, uh, like open her mind and like give her mm -hmm. options, like let her know what her options are yeah and where like she would have interests mm -hmm. and yeah so my advice would definitely be to find what you're passionate about mm -hmm. and follow it yeah um when i did the tosia sack magazine interview too yep i think i said something along the lines like just try everyone should just try mm -hmm. like no matter how shy you are or anything you might be going through like yep. there's so many people that are willing to learn like willing to teach and help mm -hmm. if it's family members or teachers or just anyone in the community yep. there's so many there's such like so much support mm -hmm. for you mm -hmm. And some kids are so shy mm -hmm. <laughs> or whatever they're going through. And I think like it's important to just try different things because I wanted to have a talk show host and oh my goodness, that happened. Yeah. And it wouldn't have happened if I stayed shy and just didn't try out. Yeah, yeah, yeah for sure, no it doubt. It was nerve wracking, mm -hmm. even just for like mm -hmm. the mock interview. Mm -hmm. You had to sit there and think of things to ask someone. Mm -hmm. There's no script. And now you're just professional <laughs> in your element. <laughs> well, I like to do it, yeah. Yeah. I like to just chat with people. It's um sometimes challenging when it's someone I don't know personally, and I have to, like, get to know them on camera. Mm -hmm. Whereas with, I know a lot, like, a lot of the people here, but 
sometimes there's people I don't know very well and I have to just try and pull questions and conversations. Oh yeah, finding yeah. the right questions. Yeah. <clears throat> so definitely follow, follow your gut and mm -hmm. put your phone down. <laughs> yeah. Put your phone down for a little while. Mm -hmm. Do you ever think that you would like start up anything on social media? Like start doing TikToks or YouTube or something and just show people? I think so. I think I'd like to do more. I do yeah. have a TikTok. Yeah. Um, and like I'm not like a person like talking to my phone, <laughs> you know, like I'm yeah. not like that. Yeah. So, um, I did like a couple TikToks with photo slides, mm -hmm. uh, slideshows. So mm -hmm. I think maybe after this, I'll have more guts to do yeah. something more. Mm -hmm. So we'll see. We had a we'll see how things go. Charity Thrasher Grubin. Mm -hmm. We had her on, and she said her husband and her. And her boy are just used to her talking to herself yeah. now <laughs> she just talks to the camera yeah. <laughs> but she's doing really good with it mm -hmm. and I find that like um, more people are interested in seeing like you know everyone has their kind of niche on social media that they could do mm -hmm. yeah I always laugh and like I told Brian Koacha mm -hmm. um, you can totally do ASMR videos, just like Bob Ross mm -hmm. on social media and mm -hmm. just listen to the paint. Yeah. Yeah. You just have to find the time to do that. Yeah. Because it does take up a lot of time. Mm -hmm. And equipment if you get really into it, like tripods and stuff. Yes. I think that's as far as I'm going to get for today. Okay. And your beautiful, beautiful earrings. Okay, so I'll show you these mitts, even though they're not done. <laughs> Those turned out really nice. Mm -hmm. Lacey will probably claim them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they are nice. Mm -hmm. I need a pair for myself, but yeah, it's warm out now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, those are really nice. And you usually use um, fox fur? I usually use fox. I, I like beaver. Like some people order beaver. Mm -hmm. Yeah, request to have beaver. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted seal skin. I was like, can we make mitts? Mm -hmm. Seal skin mitts. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. I make men's mitts too. Mm -hmm. Seal skin mitts. Can I try it on even though it's not finished? Yep. Just watch for the needle. Yeah. They just fit. <laughs> Look at how pretty. I'm going to keep mine. Mm-hmm. Those Keep are it really for nice, yeah. Then you'll be prepared for next winter. Yeah. Well, thank you for coming in and doing the show. I really appreciate it. Mm -hmm. Um, I wasn't so focused today because I was so focused on this. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So um yeah, thank you all for tuning in on today's episode of the Dunanic Show and we'll see you in the next one. Bye.